Suppose you're defending yourself against an attacker and you find that you have to hit them either with your hand or with your fist. Two of the most important features of the impact between your hand and the person are how hard you push on the person and for how long. Now, the technical term for that push on the other person is a force. You exert a force on the other person. And a force is one of those physical quantities that has a direction to it. You can exert a force on someone toward the right, or you can exert a force on someone to the left. So direction matters. Another thing about forces are that they're always exerted between two things. Uh, for example, you pushing on the other person. They don't just exist by themselves. You don't carry force with you. You exert force on something else. Well, that leaves this notion that you carry something with you during the wind-up to an impact a little fuzzy. What is it you're carrying if you're not carrying a force? Well, there is something you're carrying. It's known as momentum. And momentum is a conserved physical quantity. That means you can't create momentum or destroy it. The most you can do is move it from one object to another. In this respect, momentum resembles money. Money is a conserved quantity too, assuming that you don't print it up in your basement, you know, you're law-abiding, or you don't destroy it, meaning you're not kind of goofy. But money basically is conserved. It goes from people to people, you know, person to person to person. It is the conserved quantity of finance. Correspondingly, momentum is the conserved quantity of motion. If you want to start moving to the right, you have to accumulate some rightward momentum. Momentum, like force itself, has a direction to it. So there's momentum to the right, there's momentum to the left. They're different. So you want to move to the right, you got to accumulate rightward momentum. And the same is true of your hand, your fist, when you're going after that attacker. If you want your fist to be really crooked to the right, you have to invest a lot of rightward momentum in your fist. And to do that, you have to get it from somewhere because you can't make it, you know, you can't just cook it up from nowhere. Where does it come from? It comes from the ground and from the rest of your body. You pour rightward momentum, let's suppose the bad guy's over here, you, you pour rightward momentum into your own fist and it comes out of the rest of you. And you do this, how? By exerting a rightward force on your own fist. You can do this. You're, you can sort of think of yourself as two separate parts. Your, your, your overall body and maybe your shoulder and the rest, you know, your arm and your hand. So you're pouring rightward momentum into your fist at the expense of, of everything else. You actually could end up going backwards if you're not careful. So you pour the rightward momentum into your hand and the amount of rightward momentum your hand accumulates is equal to the force you exert on your hand times the time over which you exert it. So the harder you push your hand and the longer you push your hand, the more rightward momentum it accumulates. Well, if you want a, a fierce impact, you want to put a lot of rightward momentum into your hand. That means you push hard and you push long. You don't just go like little punch. You get going. You pour the momentum in so that it's all accumulated. And this is, this is the case not just for, for punching somebody. It's the case for throwing a baseball. You really want it going fast? You take a long windup, you pour the rightward momentum into the baseball over as long a distance with as much force as you can summon. Pack it full of rightward momentum, off it goes. Same with a hammer. You pour rightward momentum into it, get it going, packed full of momentum. When it hits the nail, it's, uh, it's going to pack a wallop. Okay, so now, now on to the impact. You have invested momentum into your hand. Now when your hand hits something, it invests momentum into what it hits. The other guy, the bad guy, okay? Your hand, chock full of rightward momentum, impacts that other person and transfers much or maybe even all of its rightward momentum into that person by way of a force for time. You know, it's, it's putting its momentum, passing, that, passing it along, and it turns out that it can pass all of its momentum 
in a variety of uh, patterns. It can either pass along all its momentum with a gentle force over a long time by pushing the person as they go away, or it can transfer all of its momentum with a giant force for a short time. If you, if you hit knuckles to jaw, that the impact is fierce and it involves a big force, but not for very long. All the momentum goes over in a jiffy. So momentum transfers, it turns out, the amount of momentum that you, that you put into something or transfer to something is just this product of force times time. You can have a little force for a long time or a big force for a short time, both of them transferring the same momentum. Well, if you really want to stun somebody, you want to make the transfer quick. Short time, big force. And so that's uh, the bare knuckle fight. You know, it's, uh, it hurts. On the other hand, if you put on big fluffy gloves and delay, prolong the impacts, it's, it's a little force for a big time. It more pushes you, but it doesn't have that peak impact force that hurts. So, there you have it. If you're trying to defend yourself against an attacker and you punch them, you do it by accumulating as much momentum toward the bad guy as possible. Big force, big time, whatever you can do to get a lot of forward momentum into your knuckles and hand. And then at the impact point, the moment when, when you touch the other person, you want to transfer all that momentum to the other person, perhaps by way of a big force for a short time. Uh, that'll hurt everybody involved, you included. Uh, but in any case, hopefully it'll have the desired effect of, of getting the bad guy to go away and leave you alone.